Welcome to the latest episode of the Bee Movie Club. I'm your host, Kevin. This week we'll be discussing the 1985 horror science fiction classic, Life Force, starring some people you may recognize, Patrick Stewart. He's in it for about five minutes. So there you go. For those of you guys joining us for the first time, the Bee Movie Club, it's like a book, a book club, for example. Each week I'll post online what movie we'll be discussing. You can send in your questions, comments, favorite scenes, favorite quotes, anything else you want to get off your chest. You can contact me on our page on Facebook, Original Bee Movie Club. Don't forget to click the like, the thumbs up. Also, you can reach us at our page on YouTube, KD9575. I'm also on Twitter, also at KD9575. My initials and my birthday. So mark it down. Before I start talking about the movie, I have to say this. I was at Disneyland yesterday, and I went and saw Captain EO in 3D. Haven't seen it in, I swear, 20 years at least. Sat down, put on the 3D glasses. Michael was Michael. What can I tell you? One scene. <laughs> For you guys, you know, not familiar with Captain EO, he is the captain of a ragtag bunch of, I don't know, some space people, I don't know, astronauts, cosmonauts, I don't know what they are. Um, and they, they're on a secret mission across the galaxy. Um, in one scene, it really, it touched me right here. Michael went, we make one more slip up, they're going to trim us out of the, trim us out of the space core. And I'm like, and that's a man that inspires. What can I tell you? <laughs> He's tough as nails, that Michael. Anyway, if you haven't seen it, it is still playing at Disneyland. So rush out and see it. <laughs> Speaking of outer space voyages, we cut to Life Force. In this, takes place in modern day. There you go. Astronauts are in, are in space. And they see a, a strange ship appear on the horizon. They investigate and they find some strange desiccated bat-like creatures floating inside. Desiccated means dried up. Okay. Mark it down. Scrabble. Um, and then flash forward. Back on Earth. The astronauts have had to abandon their mission. They're there's been a problem on board, we don't know what it is, and only one astronaut has survived. And, <laughs> and some strange naked woman. I can't explain it. Uh, we find out, over the course of the movie, I don't want to spoil everything, that in the spaceship, there were three naked people, a man, or excuse me, a woman and two men, inside this like uh, glass coffin type things, hanging upside down. And she managed to hypnotize the male astronaut, okay? So he actually got rid of the rest of the crew and brought her on board to bring down to Earth. She is a space vampire. She doesn't drink blood. She sucks your life force out of you. Like electrical bolts. And when you're done, when she's done with you, you kind of shrivel up uh, like a prune. But then you wake up and now you're a vampire too. So you want to suck the life force of the next person and on and on. It's endless. Okay. Before too long, London is overrun with these crazy zombie space vampire type creatures. Um, I don't know. It's basically a love story. Let's cut to the chase. The astronaut and the... The hot, naked, uh, space vampire woman. Uh, they, have, they have a love connection. What can I tell you? Um, but there's a lot of intrigue. It's pretty scary. Um, again, it's like when the hot lady jumps out of bed and gives you the eye, watch out. She could be a space vampire trying to suck your life force out. So watch out. Run. At all costs. Um... <laughs> This movie was originally based upon a book called The Space Vampires. And when they made the movie, they, that was originally going to be the title. But the group that made this movie, that produced it, it was called the Canon Group, 
said that that just sounds like too much like a crappy B horror movie, you know, like we usually do. So they decided to switch it up and said, well, Life Force, we call it Life Force, it'll be, it'll have more gravitas, you know, people will flock to see it. Um, originally the script, uh, based upon the novel, was written by Dan O'Bannon, you might remember him. He wrote the original script uh, for Alien, and he also wrote one of a personal B-Movie Club favorites, Return of the Living Dead, he wrote that as well. Um, directed by Toby Hooper, who you might remember. Directed uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, kind of directed Poltergeist. Um, he was actually signed by the Canon Group in a three picture deal, and this was the first one. Uh, after he did this, he went on to do such great movies as Invaders from Mars, you remember that one, of course, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Uh, all smash hits, I'm sure you recall. Uh, <laughs> uh, they actually had to come in and kind of fix up the script. About this time, Haley's Comet was circling, so Toby Hooper thought that would be kind of cool. The spaceship is somehow in the comet. Uh, Dan O'Bannon didn't like that too much. Uh, there was a lot of talk about different actors being cast in this. Sir John Gilgood was at one point going to be in this movie. Uh, he had an issue with the amount of money he was offered. He bailed. They gave his part to an unknown relatively unknown actor named Patrick Stewart. There you go, very small role. Um, other people who were supposed to be in this, Klaus Kinski, Olivia Hussey, they all bailed. Uh, and the cast, like I said, if you've seen it, if you want to see it, there's some people you might recognize, some people you definitely will not recognize. In fact, Mick Jagger's brother, Chris, plays one of the male vampires who doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. It's basically just the female one who does her thing. So there you go. <laughs> uh, when it opened, it actually uh, didn't do so hot. Um, a lot of the actors who were in this have tried to distance themselves from this movie. Uh, the lady who played uh, the naked space vampire, uh, Matilda May, a French actress, she actually like leaves it off her, uh, her bio. Can you blame her? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, Patrick Stewart was not happy with the final cut of the movie. There's a lot of complaints from the actors that whole scenes were cut out. It was, they thought, it, you know, initially the studio thought it was going to be too long, so they just cut, cut, cut. Um, like I said, there's a lot of nudity, and I guess they, uh, when, when they wanted to release it to American audiences, they wanted to cut a lot of that out. Um, and people thought they kind of messed up the whole deal. Um, it actually didn't even make half of the money it cost to uh, produce it. Eee, not too good. Um, and <laughs> actually they thought it was going to go head to head with another Space Challenger that came out that same week. Got slaughtered. It actually also had to deal with shape-shifting aliens come to our planet. The immortal horror masterpiece, Cocoon. The coon kicked its butt. <clears throat> what do you? It had Steve Gutenberg. It's not a fair fight when you bring Gutenberg to the table. That's all I can say on that. And that's about it. Uh, it currently has a 57% rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. If you haven't seen this, you've probably seen the poster. Uh, it's like there's the Earth, and then there's a big eye looking down on it, and it says, "In the blink of an eye, the terror begins." I have no idea what that means. I mean, people watching it probably be like, are there giant eyes coming out of the heavens? What is all this? It has nothing to do with anything. Um, so don't let that fool you. There's no crazy eyes in this, okay? Um, <laughs> it is still streaming instantly on Netflix, so please check it out. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, it's definitely uh, an acquired taste. Um, so rush out, check it out, let me know what you think. Um, Next week, I'm going to swing back to the comedy genre, as I'm loath to do. Um, uh, from the 2000s, adaptation from the makers who brought you uh, Being John Malkovich, starring Nicolas Cage. It, Meryl Streep's in it, for goodness sake. It is streaming instantly on Netflix, so check it out. As you know, I end every episode with a totally out of context quote, and here it is. That girl is not a girl.
she is totally alien to this planet and its life forms. And there it is. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Be sure to tell a friend. Again, you can reach me on Twitter at KD9575. You can subscribe on our page on YouTube. And please like us on Facebook. Be well. <laughs>